We welcome you to a very exciting class. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't want to join a class like this one, I'm afraid. Um, but I believe that you can go to your home shielded by God's power, energized by God's power, and to know that there's a battle going on in this world. The devil wants to take over this whole world. And the, the best way for him to do it is for you just not to recognize his presence and he'll go right at it. I'm receiving some of the most amazing literature and I may be able to speak about some of this. I, I hope that I can sometime. And it, it is a remarkable thing. I, we're going to be on hypnosis in a lesson or two. And, and I have a, from, a, uh, from a, a medical magazine to where they are now in hypnosis removing entities in, in, in people. Uh, they call, they're calling them entities. And, and so not only are they dealing with, with hypnotizing you, they are now dealing with spirits on the inside of you and the ones that are doing it haven't been born again. They, they are just, they're just regular uh, uh, doctors. And they, they, are, they are dealing in, a, in an area that is very dangerous. And so these lessons that we're taking are, are very important. And, and I'm sure that they're just a, kind of a beginning situation and, and not, a, not, a termin, not a termination, but a, but a starter. And I hope that it will awaken within you a desire to know and to learn. And uh, when these classes are all over, if you have questions, uh, we hope that we'll be able to answer them. And I mean, when the classes are completely fulfilled, if you still have a question, you can still write it back in or, or, or something, and we will uh, we'll, we'll deal with that also. The, the subject that we have been dealing with here uh, is haunted houses and ghosts. Uh, there are houses uh, that, are, that are full of God's power. You know, there, there, there are some homes that are very sweet to go into. You just feel sweetness when you walk in the front door. How many have been in a house like that? How many have been in a house just after they had a fight? Hey, you can feel it, can't you? Yeah. Well, I have been in heathen temples that a lot of people, it would frighten them because I've been there during their seances uh, when, when they're uh, foaming at the mouth and laying on the floor and, and they're in the midst of their demon worship. And I have been there. And there's a feeling there that you wouldn't find anywhere else. And so there are houses that are, that are dwelling places of demons. You may call them haunted houses. And there are what you may call ghosts. Now, it, it's only a demon spirit is all. And, and these things do function, but I want to assure you, and that's the purpose of this lesson, is that the power of God within you can remove them from any activities that they may have. Uh, if I might uh, interject one right here. Uh, my son and, and one of the members of our church's son, two of them, uh, one, one Sunday uh, decided that if you played a Beatles record backwards, you'd get a secret message. And they went down to the Kmart and purchased one, and they spent the whole of the Sunday afternoon trying to get the message. And, and uh, of course, my wife and I knew nothing about it at all. After church was over that night, we went home, and, and the children went up to bed. And, uh, and, and uh, this one of my sons came down those stairs like lightning and, and, and stood in the doorway, ashen and trembling. And I jumped up from the table where we were having some refreshments. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, the devil's in my room. And I laid my hands upon him and, and prayed for him and asked God to, to bless him. And I asked him what had happened. And he told the story of playing the, the, uh, the Beatle record backwards, trying to get a message from the devil there or from somewhere. And, and, uh, and so uh, after I prayed for him, I said, now you go into my bedroom with Mama and you, you stay there. And I walked into his bedroom, and the devil was there. It, when I walked in that bedroom, my flesh moved all over. And I spoke with a good, strong voice, and I said, Satan, uh, you're in the parsonage. <laughs> and I says, now you have to get out. I says, I'm sleeping in this room myself and by myself. And I'm telling you right now to go, to get out of here, I don't want you to ever come back to the parsonage again. We've cleaned up that other business and cleaned it out and destroyed it, and it has no further influence in this house. Now go in Jesus' name because I'm going to sleep. And I got in bed and went to sleep. 
That room has never had that influence in it from that moment until this moment, you see. Now, you see, a weaker person might have had a problem in a house, God only knows. Knockings and bangings and pinchings and all kind of mess because somebody played with the devil, you see. And, and but another one said, wait a minute, we don't tolerate that. We clean up our family. We clean up our act. We, we do what we're supposed to do. And I don't mean maybe leave here. And, and the house is clean and, and, and cheerful and, and happy uh, because God's people, God's people dwell there. Now, you can do that in any house. And a lot of you with the wrong kind of situations with your children uh, may have you. There might be several houses that need cleaning up. And if so, you can do it. That's the authority that you have. Uh, you'll notice uh, at the bottom of page 67 in your in syllabus that a haunted house is a house in which supernatural spirits reside and manifest themselves. And that the manifestations of demons in a house usually is the result of a practice of witchcraft. And if it isn't related to the occult, like this story I just told you, uh, then it is related to crime and to bloodshed, uh, such as a murder having taken place. Uh, demon entities use many forms, including manifestations in all the five senses. The manifestation is usually to announce their presence or to annoy humans. And, uh, and they, they, they are related. I, I was in a home in, in Denver, and it was, a, it was a home in those days that was about sixty-five or $75,000, and that home today would be maybe $175,000. It was a very, very nice home on a big four-lane four uh, uh, street with trees all down the middle of the street and all. It was a very pretty area. And I had this nice bedroom away in the back of the, away from the rest of the house, You'd come through the, 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 the living room and the bedrooms and the kitchen room. And even back of that was this very special uh, guest room. And so that was the room that I was using there. And it was a Christian home. And I was suddenly wakened about 2 o'clock in the morning. And in my door uh, was, was, was something. And, uh, and I could look and I could tell it with long hair and white looking hair, not, not white, but uh, blonde hair, and, and dressed in a negligee. And uh, I, I snapped on the light real quick, and there was nothing there. Then I couldn't sleep. So I sat up in bed, and I said, now, that, that's, that's funny. Here in a home where people are Christians, and, 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 and that thing here in the house at 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, by the way, the door was shut. She just wasn't using it. And, and uh, so I, I, you know... Are you as funny as I am? Uh, I got up and began to look for that thing. And so uh, they had a big, beautiful closet, so I went in there and I found a trap door. Now, this was a, a house without a, a, a basement, you see. And, and so I opened the trap door and there was that walking space, that under space, crawl space underneath. And I got me a light and looked all under there and to see if I could uh, see some bones, you know, or something. But I didn't see anything. And, and the next morning, at the breakfast table, I spoke to my friend who was a, uh, quite an intellectual, and I said, uh, there was a murder in this house. He exploded. He said, that's not true. I said, yes, it is. I said, there was a murder in this house. Now, I said, if you would just remember carefully what I say, I I'll tell you about it. I said, the woman that was murdered had long hair and was very blonde. And I said, uh, it must have been at night. Uh, because she was dressed in a negligee. Well, wh what, do you, what do you mean? I said, well, I saw that woman about 2 o'clock this morning and, and, and back there. And it began to disturb him a little, and he hadn't had the house too long, and so the, the next morning he made it his business to visit the neighbors. And he visited all the neighbors that had been there for some time, and he came back to me with his head and you know, face kind of fallen. Uh, he said, yes. It says there, there was a Swedish doctor and his wife. Uh, living in this house and said his story says he moved to California right after her death but says his story was that she committed suicide that, that she was sick and that in that back bedroom she turned a revolver into her stomach and, and, and killed herself in, in, the, in the door of that back bedroom that was a very spot that we had, that we had seen her in but said uh, some of the neighbors felt like she had not committed suicide uh, that it was otherwise, uh, but said uh, that, that's what happened here. 
And then uh, we began talking, and his wife confessed up. He says, I never wanted to confess it because I was afraid to. He says, I can be in the front part of this house alone, and I hear all kind of noises in the back part, and I come back and there's nobody here. And says, I feel a little funny feeling. He says, I start singing a chorus, and I'm all right. And so I told him, I said, now you can do one or two things. I'll pray all over this house, command it to leave. But I said, if you don't have strength to resist yourself, I would advise you to get out of here. They did. They sold it and left. Uh, but uh, uh, I went all through the house and prayed for it. And I slept in that bedroom several times after that, and I had no, no feeling whatsoever. But I just want you to know that there are houses that have entities in them that are not human, and that we, as God's people, have more power than they have, and that we can move them from the place. So when people tell about uh, ghost houses and so forth, they are correct, uh, but they, the name of them is wrong. They're they places where demons live and dwell, and they can be removed from that place. Now, when there are entities of this kind, you'll see on your, uh, in your syllabus, page 68, that uh, th their relationship to you can be by sound, because there are all kinds of rappings and poundings and clangings and footsteps and, and all kinds of sound, and we have heard, we've heard this from, well, hundreds of people, uh, voices, both intellig intelligible and unintelligible, groans, moans, and, and sometimes animal sounds, sometimes uh, inanimate sounds, uh, uh, something hitting itself like a spoon hitting the wall or something or another, and even telephone ringing and, and there's nobody there, music being played and there's nobody playing it. And, and so through the area of sound, there have been these manifestations. You can rebuke those and they will go and they will cease. Then there have been sight, appearances of shadowy figures of human-like beings. I've heard of these all over the world, and more in England than any other place that I've ever been. And animals or strange objects are considered traditional signs of haunted houses. Sometimes religious symbols appear, such as crucifixes and witchcraft emblems appear. And so there is the area of sight that has been related uh, to these entities. Also, you see there is touch. Uh, temperatures change in the body. Uh, sometimes sudden drops in temperature and sudden rises in temperature. Uh, that is a common phenomenon in these areas. Uh, many people who have encountered spirits in haunted houses have described the experiences as one of strange, unholy feelings that cover their entire bodies. Uh, but uh, they, have, uh, they, they have experienced things in the area of touch, and especially in the movement of air and in the movement of temperatures up and down. Uh, Dr. Julius Reeder, uh, it may be the only one that we know of or, or read of at least, who has recorded tasting in the world of spirit. He claims that he was physically assaulted by a spirit or a ghost and that in the struggle he bit his attacker and, and uh, before he was released and that it was a, of the taste of cold, rubbery, lifeless situation. Now, as for that, I could not vouch. Uh, I only know they're real. I have not known of a thing like that, personally. But I do know of the area of odor. Uh, I have cast spirits out of people, a number of people, uh, that had a deathly stench coming out of their mouths. And, and they, they, they were not sick and they had no reason for it. Uh, but uh, a number of times this has happened. And sometimes in these uh, pl in these houses where they are this type of thing, uh, they're, they are musty, there's a sickening odor, it, pervert, it just pervades the entire place. And you can tell that it's not a, a, a normal thing at all. You, you can tell it is a normal thing, that it is a, a sinister thing and a demonic thing. Sometimes spirits in haunted houses manifest themselves in intangible forms, as I was telling you. And the records of the, the Salem witch trials indicate that some of the victims of the hauntings in Salem left bruises, cuts, bites inflicted on human bodies. Uh, this we have known of many times. Uh, we, we've given you the illustration of Clarita Villanueva in the Philippines, in Bilibid Prison, where there were bruises on her body in, in the form of teeth marks uh, that were very deep and caused blood to flow underneath the skin eight and ten inches around 
And uh, it was all done before medical doctors. Nothing was done before anybody else. She was in jail and they had six resident doctors and they called in American doctors, Chinese doctors, more Filipino doctors. And so she was well covered with doctors and they all saw it. And when I touched her, I saw it too. I was right holding a, her head, praying for her when she was bitten on the shoulder and the neck and the leg with deep bites like this. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and we cast that thing out of her and set her free. Also, this manifestation, as we have described to you uh, earlier, uh, through the moving of objects in a, in, a, in a house. This is a very common thing. Opening doors, closing doors, opening windows, closing windows, hurling stones, hurling books, setting fires. Uh, and this all characterizes houses where entities live, uh, such as demons and, and, and spirits. And the Swanton Novers Rectory in England, which was haunted at the time of 1919, with a very particular manifestation of a strange and mysterious dripping of water and oil, and it came right out of the ceiling with nothing in the attic. Uh, no, no physical explanation could be offered after repeated studies, yet it could not be denied that over 50 gallons of this mysterious subject was collected, and, and it was a, a very strange situation. Uh, sometimes it's the Bible and, and symbols of Jesus' authority that are, are attacked in haunted houses. In one case, a Bible was partially burned by a spirit, and the remaining portion was opened to an account in Mark's gospel about an exorcism or the casting forth of a devil. They were so angry about it. In a haunted house in 1851, the, the spirits collected clothes from all parts of the house, arranged them to depict a prayer meeting. Most of the figures uh, had Bibles, each of which was open to a chapter about demon spirits. And when you find a bunch of clothes, like humans, in, 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 in a circle around, and a Bible there, and all open to a thing of a demon spirits, there's somebody been uh, pretty busy around there. They say that possibly the most haunted house or where spirits live happened to be a rectory. Now, that's very difficult for me to realize. A, a rectory, that's, in England, that's the house of a parsonage. And, uh, and it had been labeled as the most haunted house because in 37 and 38, researchers into the paranormal uh, circumstances of, uh, of spiritism investigated the house for 14 months and logged over 2,000 events by ghosts in that one house. And the most dramatic was the appearance of a nun asking for prayers and a mass uh, to deliver her tormented soul and the appearance of a coach driven by a headless man. Now, even places of that, of that nature can be set free. Brother, I just don't believe that the, the devil has any house in the world we can't take away from him. Amen. Yeah. And it's a pity that in these countries they don't do it. Now, I know by looking at this large class here, uh, that they're, they're you that could tell me stories greater than these and that you know of places uh, are yourself that I'm only telling you not to tell me to tell Jesus and set the people free. Let's don't play with this subject. Let's believe it. Let's prepare ourselves for it and let's set humanity free. God wants humans to be free. The devil has no rights. He has no rights. He has no rights. We have all the rights. And I know that. Uh, one that you all know about is the Amityville Horror House, you know, in Long Island, where a family moved in what they thought was a dream home, and it turned out to be a nightmare. Red liquid uh, flooded through the keyholes. Uh, green slime oozed through the walls. Strange odors penetrated the atmosphere. The temperature shifted as much as 15 degrees in an instant. Weird sounds like an elephant rolling on the floor and innumerable other ghost experiences drove them out of their house after only 28 days of living in it. And as you know, the major newspapers of America, major magazines and television shows, and a book, a full-length movie was created uh, from this Amityville horror uh, a situation. And, and there was no one to set them free. And those that they called in, uh, religious people, were not able to set them free. Haunted houses have existed since the earliest times of man. Animist cultures still have their taboo houses. Maybe you didn't know that. But you go to the primitive people where they still have their taboo house. And, and that taboo house is where the spirits of the dead reside. And, and, and you might walk by and laugh at them, but you wouldn't do that at midnight if you walked by by yourself. You'd, you'd become very conscious that the taboo house is, is for real. 
The ancient Egyptians, the ancient Romans, the ancient Greeks, and all the ancient cultures have recognized that certain houses and places were locations where special spiritual activity take place that's of the nether world, that's not normal nor natural. Also, we have found that famous people uh, have, have, uh, have, have been recorded uh, encounters with these kind of ghosts and also of haunted houses. Uh, Joan of Arc of France is said to have heard voices and, uh, of, of spirits, uh, which was supposedly how she was guided in her military decisions uh, to fight, especially the British. And uh, it is said that King James of Scotland was visited by a ghost, which warned him of a defeat that he would have in battle. It is believed that Napoleon was visited by a spirit while he was in exile, telling him how to regain his throne and how to become the emperor again of the empire. It is chronicled that John Wesley's childhood home, and again, it's the, it's the rectory at Epworth. I have, been, I have been there personally. I've been to the church, and I've been to the home also. They, they still keep it there in the town of Epworth, where John Wesley's father was the pastor and, and lived, and John Wesley was reared there as a child. That especially during, in, during the times of, of uh, 1776 and 17, 1716, 1717, the house reported many knockings and sounds and groans and creaks uh, during that period, and they saw ghostly human and animal figures uh, without a physical explanation uh, of it at all. And uh, I am sure that the one place in town that shouldn't be is in the preacher's house <laughs> or any, 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 any Christian's house, and I'm sure of that. It is said that Abraham Lincoln counseled with a medium. This we don't know for advice before signing the Emancipation Proclamation, a, that he experienced ghostly appearances in the White House. It is said that one such supernatural encounter, he was forewarned of his death. We had heard that he had a dream relative to his death. This we do not know of. Many well-known present-day personalities claim, claim that they have experienced ghosts and they have experienced uh, haunted houses. Now, what does the Bible teach us about this kind of thing? Uh, the, the Bible... Uh, so it teaches us very clearly. The spirits which inhabit buildings are not the spirits of dead people, number one. And, and when they say you ain't Mary, you ain't Susie, or somebody is related, that is not true. They are not the spirits of dead people. They are evil spirits. They are fallen angels. They are what we call uh, demons. The Bible does not teach that dead people's spirits can return to haunt or communicate with the living. Never. The only biblical reference to such a thing is that remarkable occurrence in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 28 and verse 12 when King Saul visited a witch called the Witch of Endor. And the witch screamed with horror when the spirit of one called Samuel came to the seance because she had never actually communicated with the dead before in her incantations. She, she really got a hold of something she couldn't handle. The ghostly events in haunted houses can be explained as a work of demons. We've already seen in this study that demons speak. They, they throw victims around, and they cause all sorts of manifestations, even in so-called haunted houses. Just as the devil can possess a person, he can possess an object. I, I was uh, in, in one, one, one time visiting the very primitive people uh, way up in, in Luzon, uh, the, the tribes people, and, and their gods lived in a tree. And, and they didn't want anybody to photograph that tree. It was the strangest tree you've ever seen. Right in the middle of the tropics, it didn't have a single leaf on it. In the middle of the tropics where this leaves are everywhere, there wasn't a leaf on it. I've never seen a tree in my life that had so many crooks and turns and ugly spots on it. It was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It just, it just couldn't go straight for two inches before crooking. And down at the bottom was all kind of incense, was all kind of uh, food that they were giving to the spirits. And they said, in this tree, the spirits live that answer our prayers, the, the spirits of witchcraft that they were involved in. And so uh, it can be, and we are very sure of it. As I told you before, there are two things you can do to these kind of places. You can destroy them, number one, or you can, through prayer and dedication, turn that thing around and say, listen, uh, we're going to clean this place up through prayer, and you can make it a clean house. Uh, you can clear out anything that the devil has a, a working against you or working against anyone else. We can clear the air and we can clear the building by the mighty power of God. He that is in us is so much greater, so much stronger, so much more wonderful than he that is in the world that we have the supreme power of not only setting people free, but setting areas free, uh, setting areas free. And we want you to know this. We want you to believe it. We want you to begin to act upon it. Uh, this class would not be fulfilling 
if we didn't know in the days and the weeks ahead of us that you were out there setting people free. There are more people at this moment that need help than ever in the history of the world. There are more people that need prayer today than ever in the history of the world. And may you be those that set others free. And may you be those that love those that are hurt. And uh, above all, it's in the realm of superstition, you know. They, they get moving over into that area of, of superstitious things, and, and they, they don't know how to get out of it. And you have to reach in there and say, now listen, the Word of God is true. You believe the Word of God, and you can be set free. Uh, your family can be set free. Uh, your house can be set free. And, and you can know the mighty power of God. How many know of some house uh, where there are strange manifestations that take place? Would you raise your hand? That is a very remarkable thing that in a, a class like this, there's so many that know of such a place. How many know of some person that needs a special deliverance from God? Would you raise your hand? Isn't that amazing? That's 25% that's of the total class that knows it. Now, now we are God's deliverers. The, the Lord Jesus Christ said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And they that believe and are baptized shall be saved. And they that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And so you have the divine authority to do this. And may God give you his strength and his compassion. <laughs> there are some people that could do it, and they don't want to. They don't want to be bothered. You need real compassion in your heart to say, I want to set people free. I want to bless humanity. And in doing so, you'll have great joy in your own heart and great victory in your own personal life.